So let's take a look at running the debugger in Eclipse. I've got my, my program we've been working on here is the My First Class. And you know what? I will break this up into two separate lines. That way it's a little easier to, to debug and to step through. And so we'll just break that up, two lines, system out print line hello, and on the next line, arg0. Make sure I save this. And by the way, if you don't save the file and you push run, it'll pop up a dialog and ask you if you, uh, you want to save it. And a lot of times I just click on the little checkbox that says just always save before launching. All right, so we have something going there. And I'll do a print and print ln. That way it does it the proper way. There we go. So I want to debug. Um, the quickest way to run the debugger uh, is to set a breakpoint and then launch the debugger. Well, to set a breakpoint, you off to the far left of my editor, my text editor here, I have this blue bar. And I can right click in there and toggle a breakpoint. And so I've gone ahead on the first printout, I've added a breakpoint. It appears like a little blue ball there. And now once I've done that, <coughs> excuse me, once I've done that, I can click on the debug, little bug icon, or you can go to run debug if you'd rather do that, the F11 key, and that launches the debugger. Um, real quick, on my Windows, it popped up some dialog. Uh, okay, I'll say allow. Uh, but also, Eclipse is asking if we should change the perspective. And yes, we want to. We want it to be organized the way the debugger wants to organize things. I'll make this a little bit larger here since we have so much to look at here. So we've set a breakpoint. We double clicked or I right clicked in my case on the blue margin, set a breakpoint. And I clicked on that debug button in the toolbar. And it's asked us about that perspective change. We're good with it. And so now we're in this debug perspective. In debug perspective, the upper left-hand uh, view has kind of a, a bit of a stack um, trace here for us. It's showing us that we're in the My First Class main line five uh, within the My First Class program. And if we had lots of other methods we were calling in a deeper uh, stack, it would show that hierarchy right here. Um, over to the right, it shows that we currently have a single variable, the args variable. And if I expand that, argument 0 has Jamie in it, and argument 1 has Romero in it. The debugger is a fabulous way of seeing what's stored inside of particular uh, variables. And I'll, down lower left-hand frame, here's my, my editor that I had before. It's showing with kind of like a green highlight the line that it's currently waiting on, that it's stopped on. So that's where our breakpoint was. To the right, we have the outline view. And then down the bottom, there's the console. Uh, right now, there's nothing's printed yet because we haven't stepped through uh, our green line here. So let me go ahead and do that. We're on line five. We want to step through that. Up, up at the top of the screen, we have various different buttons that we can work with. And um, let me show you a few of them here. So there's a resume button which would be, uh, would say, run it until you find another breakpoint or run it to the end now that it's stopped. There's a terminate button. So that's what that, that red button looks like. You can just kill the program. And then we have our stepping buttons. We can step into a method. So in this case, it would actually step into the print method. So it would reach into the Java libraries, and we could see what the code looks like for printing. Or we could do a step over. Step over says, well, we don't need to see how the print works. We just need to run this line of code and go to the next line of code. So do we want to go down deeper, or do we want to just step over? And if we're deep inside something, we can do a step return, which bounces us up a level. And there's other stuff in here as well. But the, the most common things here are going to be your resume, your terminate, and your, your step buttons. So I'll go ahead and do a, we'll do a step over. We can see we've moved from line 5 to line 6. The green bar now is hovering over line 6. And the output of line 5 is showing down in the console. It says, hello. Well, now on step 6, I'll try. We'll see what happens. I'll try to do a step into. So I do a step into. Oh, good. And it made its way into this print stream class from the Java libraries. And we're in this print ln method that's doing certain things. And so I'll do a couple step overs here. 
So it's doing some sort of printout. There goes the Jamie. Oh, and so this is a print LN. So it printed whatever the string was, so Jamie, and then it's going to do a new line. Remember, print LN does a new line, whereas print does not. And so if I, I guess I could step into and see the new line if I wanted to. I try it. Sometimes you don't know where you're going to end up. All right, here's the new line stuff going on. And it looks like it's doing certain things to do a new line. At this point, it's pretty deep in there. I'm going to do a step return. And that'll bounce me back out to the print LN. And I'll do another step return. And that'll take me back out to my class. Um, at this point, it's printed out hello and Jamie. And it's almost done executing. It's at the close curly brace of the class. I could continue doing steps. Or I could just hit that resume button. And it'll take me to the end and terminate. So I highly encourage you folks to use the debugger. Anytime you're trying to learn what a program's doing, uh, instead of typing little printouts in, add breakpoints. Run your code, have it stop at the breakpoint, investigate what's going on, step, step, step. If you get confused and lost, you can always do step returns or just run it to termination and, and debug it again. So if I wanted to run the debugger again, I could just click on debug, and it pops back in, back on line five, ready to go. I could do a step over, step over. You can run this as many times as you want. Uh, once you're done debugging and you're happy with your results, you can simply go back to the, the Java perspective. So window, open perspective, Java. Or on the far right, I could have just clicked on that Java button. That takes me back over here in the Java perspective. Uh, I notice I have some extra things open now in the Java perspective. RT.jar is expanded on the far left. RT.jar, that's the that has all the, the library uh, classes in it. So I guess I could squish that back down. We don't need it. And on the far right, there's, oh, that's why. Print stream is still open. Remember, that, that's the thing from the libraries that did the print LN. Um, well, we don't want to, we don't need to worry about that anymore. So I could just close that out. Now I close rt.jar. I think since I had it linked, the uh, package explorer with the editor, that's what expanded that out for me. And if I don't care for this breakpoint anymore, if I'm not going to use it, I can right click and uh, toggle it back off if I needed to. Or you could also double click in there to toggle a breakpoint. Another thing to mention in that, that blue bar when you right click, you can choose show line numbers. That's really useful. I like that. And so it'll display for you uh, what line each of these is on. If you don't have line numbers turned on, you can always look at the bottom. Uh, in the uh, bottom of the screen, it shows you what line and column you're on. Uh, if, if, if that's better, uh, it's up to you. I like the line numbers. I'll leave them on. So uh, again, like before, I highly encourage you, maybe pause the video, or, or we'll, we'll shut down this section here. But after this video, maybe go and uh, run the debugger on your system. Set up a breakpoint. Step through there and, and get familiar with how it works. It's really critical to learning Java to, to know what's going on behind the scenes and feeling how it methods call from one thing to another. So by all means, uh, play with the debugger.